This question comes to us from C, and C writes this, Hey, WeTV, in order to be considered a quote-unquote good church, does a church need to make itself completely understandable to outsiders? In other words, does it need to change words like narthex, offertory, altar guild, and so forth? If not, does it run the risk of becoming a foreign subculture? Thanks for any help on this. C. C, uh, great question. I mean, this is a really, really fun question to consider. So the question is this. Does the church bear the responsibility of making itself understandable to those who are outside the church? I would answer yes, indeed. But then the question arises is this. How is the church to make itself understandable? Now, on the one side, we are told that the church must change its language uh, to take the language of the church and to exchange it for the language of the day in order to make it more understandable to those on the outside. However, there's actually an alternative way of looking at, at this, and that is this. That is to teach those from the outside what these words actually mean. And that can happen through a number of different ways. As we bring people into uh, the church through uh, maybe adult membership class, we can teach what these words mean. There are also all sorts of resources such as this, and we use this here at Zion. It's, it's wonderful. It's called the Divine Service and Explanation, and it goes through the whole divine service and has every different part and word, and it tells what the word means, where it's taken from scripture, and the daily application in the life of the person attending the church service. Phenomenal resource. Now, Apart from that, apart from teaching those who are in the church, again, I had mentioned this before, that we're sometimes pressured to change those words. And if we don't, we're kind of frowned upon as being uh, not mission, missional or mission-loving or caring of outsiders. But I'd like to take that idea and apply it to something else and see if it actually stands up uh, according to something else. You know, let me explain this, what I mean. Uh, my son and I, we've become huge NDSU Bison fans. I've been a Bison fan for, you know, pretty much my whole life, but more so since we live next to Fargo. And I've been bringing my son to these NDSU football games. It's just awesome. I mean, go Bison. It's, it's awesome. They're a five-time national champions, FCS. <laughs> And so when we go to these Bison games, we've had to actually learn a liturgy, a liturgy of the football uh, game itself. You come in, there's certain music, there's times you stand, there's times where you clap, there's things that you say, and there's language that exists uh, in this Fargo Dome, the way that people talk. Uh, the rules have a sense of language, you know, first down, second down, interference, uh, touchdown, field goal. And I've had to actually correct my son at times. You know, they kicked a, a field goal and he said, they made the punt. And I said, no, son, it's actually a field goal. I've had to train him what these words mean. Now, if you imagine if I came to that football game with my son and I started complaining, saying, you know what, you guys need to come up with the times, change these words in order to help me as a non-football person understand it, people would actually kind of scoff at that. <laughs> You serious? They would say, no, this is the language of football. This is what it means to be a Bison fan. And then if they denied the possibility of me actually learning, then, then they would be held, I guess you would say, we could frown upon that. But generally speaking, people would say, come on, sit next to me. I'll explain it to you. I'll catechize you. I'll teach you what it means to be a Bison football player because we are proud of what it means to be a Bison fan. Now, the same thing goes with the church. We do have some words that are indeed archaic and somewhat um, unfamiliar, but that should not make us in a position, put us in a position of being uh, shamed or feeling bad. In fact, we should be excited about these words, and when an outsider then comes in, we can say, you know what, this may not make sense to you, but sit next to me, let me tell you what the rich heritage of this word is, where it comes from in Scripture, what it means, and then you will be grafted into this church body, which has a culture extending back hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of years back to those who have come before us. And that way we are in this faith, this church history of those who have gone before us. I mean, it's really a remarkable thing to think about. So there you have it. There's an answer for you. So must the church make itself understandable? Yes, and it can do that by catechizing and teaching and showing and not being ashamed of our words, but being excited to explain that and teach that to others so that they may come with us to receive the precious word and sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that helps, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, Lightning Cut Watchers, if you liked the video, please click like and comment below. 25 likes and 25 comments. Increase this video on YouTube for others to see as well. Now, with that in mind, if you also want to learn more about today's topic, check out Issues Etc. Talk Radio for the Thinking Christian. Peter's going to leave a link below. Click on it, download it, listen to it. You won't be disappointed. 
Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, 10, or $25 is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click donate now. Yeah.